today we will be learning uh, three states of the matter. Of course, many of you are mechanical engineers, even otherwise you might have studied all these things in the fundamentals. Of course, today and tomorrow is mostly about uh, uh, fundamentals of uh, fluid. So, there is nothing uh, big to learn, but these are all the concepts that you should be very clear so that you can understand the rest of the subject. Okay? So, I am then defining some of the uh, terms, mass density, weight density, specific weight, specific flow weight, all that. And then, uh, I think last semester itself I have spent a lot of time on explaining the term pressure. We typically do a uh, revisit so that that gets recorded. And then, uh, different types of uh, uh, pressure. And uh, why pressure is called as a head and some of the common uh, discussions about the pressure. That's the agenda of the day. So, solids and fluids. In solids, the molecules are usually uh, very closer and uh, has a stronger uh, bond in solid. So, because of that, you, know, you feel uh, that the load is applied, it deforms elastically up to certain limit. And within the elastic limit, you remove the load, it comes back and remains in the position. And uh, beyond elastic limit, there is a permanent deformation because it gets reset to that particular fuel position. And, uh, that's how the solids generally be. Anyway, our uh, subject is more to do with uh, fluids, that is liquids and gases. So here, the molecules of uh, gas or uh, liquid, they are much further and uh, uh, when some force is applied, especially uh, gas, when force is applied, it gets compressed. Okay, that's solids, the other extreme, gas, this extreme. The molecules are far uh, away from each other. When you apply pressure, there's enough space for uh, the gas molecules to come closer. So this allows the property called you know, the, the compressibility of the gas. So you are able to compress because there is enough gap between the molecules. And uh, when the external force is removed, the, when you apply force, and then you remove your force, the gas expands uh, indefinitely no limit for it. It's, it simply expands. Okay? Unlike solids, so solid load deforms to the uh, extent uh, that you apply force uh, that's linearly proportional to the last load. And when you remove it, it uh, remains back to gas the other extreme. Okay? Liquid is liquid. It is neither too rigid, it is not too loose. Uh, so molecules are somewhere in between stay. And uh, but you cannot further compress too much. There is only a small possibility of compressing the liquids, most of the liquids. And uh, the numerical values are too negligible. For all practical purposes, we say the compressibility of gases are almost nil. So we say liquids are all incompressible. So liquids are all incompressible. But there is a possibility, small possibility is there. But it is very, the compressibility factor is very, 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 very small. So for all practical purposes, we say liquids are all incompressible. Okay. In our subject, uh, what are the uh, functions of hydraulic fluids? Okay. What are the functions? One, to transmit power. That's the main job in our subject, fluid power system. Okay. Transmit power. Because power means uh, pressurize the fluid, go and uh, does some job. Okay. It's basically the pressure getting transmitted. You see, power is getting transmitted. Because once pressure goes, the force goes around with it in a particular area and the force acting on a moving body displacing the body to some distance is doing the work. So it is actually work. The capacity to do work is power. So when we say power, pressure is getting transmitted from one end to another end, we can also say uh, transmit power from one end to another. So it's a power, hydraulic power it has to transmit. And to lubricate the moving parts, of course uh, this is applied to uh, uh, hydraulic liquids. Okay, most of the hydraulic liquids. So they lubricate the moving parts. Also, they see the clearance between the painting parts. This is piston, this is cylinder, and there is a small clearance between, very, very, very small clearance between the piston and the cylinder. Okay. The hydraulic uh, liquids will seal that clearance, seal means it will close the clearance. Uh, also, it will lubricate the painting surface between these two surfaces. There is a small gap that gets closed. 
only that gets closed, the pressure is getting developed here, or the pressurized fluid will be able to push the cylinder that side. If that's not getting closed, then the liquid will go to this side, and pressure will not be developed here. Okay. So uh, sealing function is another function of the hydraulic fluids, and the dissipate heat. Uh, we reduce the friction between the mating parts and the, uh, by lubricating them right? because of the lubrication property of the liquid. Right? In spite of that, some amount of heat is uh, getting generated because there is a moving part, there is a mating part, metal to metal contact is there. And uh, that heat is absorbed by this hydraulic liquid and then it goes to the tank and it dissipates the heat from this portion. So these are all the functions of hydraulic fluid. Okay. Hydraulic fluid, when we say, what are all the properties of hydraulic fluids that is desirable? I can list, but it will be nice if you would tell, because more, more, many of you can uh, uh, tell you something about the desirable. Suppose no, you are a, a company uh, fellow who is trying to choose hydraulic fluid. What are all the properties that you will look for? It should be incompressible. It should be? Incompressible. Yeah, it should be incompressible. Both have good lubricating property. Should have good lubricating property. This was a good question. Fluid must be optimum, not to thin, not to thin. Yeah, the viscosity of the fluid should meet the application requirement. The optimum. It should not be too low. It should not be too high. Then it should not be inflammable. Yeah, it should not be inflammable. It should not be operated. It should not be operated. It's all operated. It should withstand the temperature, sir. Yeah, with uh, temperature stability. I know when it is exposed to some temperature, there should not be any fire hazard or uh, evaporation or any other reaction because of the temperature. Temperature stability. It shouldn't corrode the materials of the. It shouldn't corrode the materials of the. Yeah, erosion, erosion, uh, all those. Uh, uh, properties should be uh, favorable to us. That means it should not control, no erosion, all those things should be there. No reaction of chemically, uh, physically, there should not be any reaction with the um, the uh, metal parts or the pipe through which it is flowing or the, the hydraulic component through which it is flowing. Then, chemical stability. Environmentally, it should not be uh, getting affected. Then, it is. Huh? I discussed it before you come to club What else? What else you will look for in the hydraulic fluid? Cost. Yeah, cost. All these properties are there, but one liter is uh, two lakh rupees. Uh, if it is available, you will not be able to buy and use it for our. Should be low cost. Okay. That's a desirable characteristic. The other one? Huh? All of these properties are there. Very low cost, but it is available only in Amazon parts. Not available in India and not, not Abundantly available. Yeah, easily available in the locality that we live. Of course, a few more. We will see what we have. Good looping city, ideal viscosity. Chemical and environmentally stable, compatibility with the system material, that's what no reacting with material. Bulk modulus, uh, that's uh, compressibility, that talks about the compressibility. And fire resistant, it should not get fire. Uh, also, it should not assist the fire. There are two characteristics, both should be valuable for us. Good heat transfer capacity, okay, it should have good heat transfer capacity. Some liquids are already inert in taking the heat. It should be able to absorb heat and dissipate. So it should have good heat transfer capacity, low density, foam resistance. It should not generate foam because to and fro motion, rotary motion is all going to be there as part of the wave system. It should not have foam uh, generating problem. It should have foam resistance problem. Okay. It should be inexpensive and readily available in the market. Okay. So these are all the requirements one should look for. There are many other properties, but they are all important ones. Right. Um, suppose you know I have a liquid uh, already, I, so now the company is running, I just joined as an engineer, fluid flow engineer. 
I want to know whether the fluid is in good condition or not. Whether the hydraulic fluid is in good condition or not. So what are all the key quality indicators of the hydraulic liquid or hydraulic fluid that's used in the Number one, viscosity. Viscosity is the key parameter. Viscosity is the key parameter of the liquid. Number two, the water content. Normally, you know, the um, atmosphere has the water content and uh, the liquid is said to absorb some amount of water content into the liquid. If the water content goes beyond the limit, then it's a problem for us. Okay? So that creates a problem. So water content in the hydraulic fluid is a problem. And then of course, uh, the contamination because of the foreign particle eventually can happen in the industrial atmosphere because it's always tested. Most of the industry, um, the, the factory atmosphere will be a little dusty. So it will absorb dust because it's oil. So it will absorb uh, dirt and the oil, I mean the uh, dirt particle level goes beyond some limit. Uh, you know, it, it becomes unusable. So you are going to see oil. So uh, when I go as an engineer, uh, this, all these properties we will choose. It's a new factory or they are installing a new hydraulic system. And first time ordering my hydraulic fluid, I look for hydraulic fluid all this problem. That's a day one. Once all these decided what type of oil, 2P oil, 4P oil, some technical name will be there, commercial name will be there, not technical, commercial name will be there. You decide the oil and started using it, right? Then on a day-to-day -day basis as a maintenance engineer or an engineer in a factory, you will be looking for these three definitions. Viscosity, water content and the particle uh, uh, and combination. Okay. We will talk about this again uh, maybe in the coming classes. Now, uh, we have discussed some of the uh, desirable properties of liquid. Okay. Air as a property of uh, uh, pneumatics, as a source of uh, power. Air as a hydraulic fluid power. Uh, what are all the advantages? And next slide, what are all the disadvantages? What are all the advantages of air? Of course, it is inexpensive, available everywhere. So, all big advantage and no cost, no inexpensive. Fire resistant, it doesn't catch fire. But of course, it helps fire. The air is there, it helps uh, growing the fire. But it resists, uh, it doesn't catch fire by itself. It's, uh, it is not messy. What I mean by it is not messy is normally the hydraulic systems, because the oil is used as a fluid, and now it, it absorbs a lot of uh, uh, dirt. Also, the, there's a possibility of oil getting spilled into the factory uh, floor. So, normally, a hydraulic system plays will. It is all possible that it can be missing. Not always, but there are good possibilities it is missing. But the pneumatic system will be cleaner, cleaner and It can be exhausted backward possibly, so you don't have to uh, have a return mechanism to uh, this. In case of piping, for example, uh, see even a pneumatic uh, power source, there will be a compressor, there will be a tank, there is a separate building maybe in most of the industries. From there, as a pipeline will come, the pressurized air will come, and you put a tap in and take pressure wherever you want, and then use the pneumatic power source. Whereas, a hydraulic power source, normally it is not done like that. Normally, there will be a power pack for every machine that you want to use, a separate power pack. The pressure is developed, and then use it, and then there is a return light back to the tank. We do that because the return light also we have to use. In pneumatics, you only have to use pressure like demand it wherever you want you just release it there and there and the valve itself through exhaust it goes to the atmosphere so that's an advantage right so you don't the piping cost uh, wiring cost is less in case of this. what are all the disadvantages of using air as a fluid power one uh, this is not used where the accurate positioning is needed or rigid clamping is needed for example I have a workpiece that has to be clamped the machine for the purpose of machine. If the amount of cutting force involved is less, then probably they will use pneumatic clamps. If the cutting force is very high, big for things, then uh, pneumatics I would prefer. Uh, for the big forces, I will go for hydraulic forces. Also, there is a positioning. For example, there is a, uh, a need for uh, thicken place row. Very precisely, the robot in all has to go to a place, fit, come back, very precisely in a particular location has to be kept. Imagine might not be the right choice for you to choose as a source of power. Okay?
hydraulic will do, the electrical will do, but uh, pneumatic power is very accurate, very precise uh, positioning we want to prefer pneumatics uh, because there is a small compressibility problem, small variability in the entropic targets about the lamp. So in automation, that's it, that's it. A little sluggish, that's sluggish because the compressibility of the It is corrosive because of the gas that's present in the uh, air. Uh, when it reacts with the water, it becomes acid and uh, those acids will react with the material and become corrosive. Corrosive uh, since it contains oxygen and water. Uh, it's not uh, having the lubricating ability by itself. So you need to uh, spray or some way you have to add lubrication into the pneumatic system. That's an additional job for us. It doesn't have self-lubricating property. Very high pressures uh, cannot be used. Okay. It's because of compressibility. Because you apply a very high force, the gas can start getting down. So that becomes a bigger problem at higher pressures. That is why we go for liquids uh, as a source of power. This is air yeah, as a fluid. Advantage is advantage. So here. Now, another 10 to 15 slides is all about fundamental terms and definitions that you have already discussed. So, I'll be quickly rushing to do it. Any term that you are not familiar, you stop me with this. Okay? Fine. So, weight, all of you know, right? Weight, force, is all the same. Every particle which is having a mass is attracted by the center of the earth. That's a, that attraction force is called gravitational force. Mass times the gravitational force is called weight. It's called weight. Then density. Mass per unit volume is density. This is a defined term. So you define mass per unit volume is a density. Okay. And uh, these are all some of the uh, commercial names of the liquids that are available and the corresponding density of the hydraulic fluids commonly used. See, many of the liquids have less density than water. That's why when uh, the hydraulic fluid is uh, uh, spill over and the water is poured, the oil will start over and above the liquid. It will be uh, floating over the water because it is having less density. Of course, some liquids have more density than water, but you have to choose according to your density. What will happen to the uh, density with respect to pressure and temperature? Density increases with pressure. Density increases with pressure. Is it common sense? Understand that? When pressure increases, there are more number of molecules in given volume. So more mass in the same volume, in the high pressure region. So mass divided by volume is density. So density is and density increases with temperature. When uh, when you heat the gas. The gas molecules get a lot of energy, they expand and in the given volume there are less number of particles. In the given volume there are less number of particles because the gas expands as you heat. So less number of molecules into mass, that will be the total mass. Volume remains same, mass divided by volume, density is small. The density is getting decreased with the temperature, whereas the density is getting increased with pressure. Understand? Any doubts? Yeah? What is the specific weight? We take one unit volume, whatever the weight of that substance, we call it as unit, specific. Okay. Also, we call it as weight density. The density, normal density, in the definition we put, we also call it as mass density. Weight divided by volume, we call it as weight density. Okay. So this is uh, weight divided by volume is weight density, and density and uh, weight density are related by rho is um, gamma is rho g. Okay, gamma is rho g. Okay. Fine. Rho is uh, mass. Divided by volume, I multiply by volume, divide by volume, what, what do I get? Mass into 
मास पर वॉल्यूम इज डेंसिटी वेट डेंसिटी एंड आई हैव वन मोर वॉल्यूम देयर एंड should be able to derive uh, from one to the other yeah. uh, here we have we start from mass density mass density is mass per one is it i multiply by g and g gravity of force mg is weight 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 divided by volume is
pressure is what is the definition of pressure force per gain what is force i can call force as a weight weight per area weight and force are same so i call it as weight per area uh, any expression i can multiply and divide by the same quantity that is a change so i for manipulation purpose i multiply and divide by volume this is volume okay and uh, weight per volume is what weight per volume is gamma volume divided by area volume i can express it as area into height divided by area volume is what length into length into Length into breadth into height, or in other terms, or area times height is volume. So area times height is volume. This area I have written. These two combinedly produce this weight <coughs> into volume. I am rewriting it as A into H. This A I am giving it as this. So this A and this A goes. What remains is this. The gamma into For most of the practical applications, this is constant. So it is always, or it is quite possible to address the pressure in terms of kind of the liquids. So many liters of water, if I say, I don't say the liquid also water. That means once I say water, this gets fixed. So many high, we define what will be the pressure. That's why it's common in some applications, especially not in fluid flow systems. Other fluid applications, they address the pressure in terms of height of water. As goes, this we already explained. We we have closer look at the pressure. There are molecules inside the uh, piston and cylinder arrangement. They are moving randomly inside the uh, cylinder. They come and hit, go back like this. Every time it gets, there is a momentum transfer, and uh, the force is uh, applied onto the piston. So there are a number of uh, Particles are there, so number of forces will come and take. There is an angle. You take the x component of that that is responsible for the movement of the piston towards right. So that is the force that is acting, but on the piston because of the gas or liquid molecules. There is an area for the piston. That's the area. So you have force. You have area. Force divided by area is pressure. That's how you get your pressure. Because of that pressure, it moves towards right. Having this in the template and recollecting whatever we discussed in the last semester, you you have to answer these things. As volume increases, the pressure decreases when temperature is kept constant. Okay, you are able to uh, visualize that. When volume increases, what does that mean? Oh, sorry. When volume increases, from here to here the piston moves. You manually move. You maintain the temperature constant. What will happen to the pressure inside the gas? Pressure. Volume increases. Pressure should decrease. <coughs> pressure should decrease. Why? Because earlier there were only a small volume for the molecules to move around, and uh, each molecule. Will quickly move around and then come and hit the piston. Now there is a big space. The molecule has to run a little extra distance to come back and hit second time. So it takes more time for each molecule to come and hit. At any given time, the number of molecules hitting that piston will be less on an average statistical measure. So the total uh, net force got reduced. The area remains same. Force got reduced.
is one and the same. What's happening in the molecular level? We just name it pressure. By measuring some instrument, we just name it temperature by measuring the other instrument. When we heat, what happens? The molecules become more energetic. They run faster. They run faster. The temperature calculation is the average kinetic energy of the molecule is temperature. The average kinetic energy of the molecules. When you heat, the kinetic energy increases, the molecules move faster. How pressure increases? Because molecules move faster, the, the piston is fixed and it moves faster. So at any given instant, the average number of molecules hitting the piston will be more. Because every fellow goes faster and comes and hits the piston again, again and again. Okay? Then the previous thing. So the average force that's acting on the piston is higher, the area remains the same, so pressure increases. So pressure increases also. So this is um, when temperature is increased, pressure also increases when volume is kept on. Okay. When volume increases, that's a different issue. The first case we discussed is when volume increases, temperature remains constant. What happens to the pressure is pressure will come down. When volume is fixed, you also apply the heat, the pressure inside the medium, inside the uh, container increases. That's because of energy energy of the particle increases. Particles moves faster. It comes and heats more frequently. That means the average force at any given instant is high. The area remains the same. Force greater to the area, pressure increases. Right. And liquids and gases, uh, you talk about pressure. Okay? For liquids and pressure, you apply force, you see what's happening. Uh, force per unit area is the term you call it as pressure. Okay? And then, how about solids? How do you call Same uh, phenomenon. The behavior may be same. You apply pressure per unit area. Force per unit area in solids is what? Strength is the maximum 
value static pressure dynamic pressure i have explained in the moving fluid uh, fluid uh, i mean last semester we have explained anyway just quickly to recollect uh, the fluid is flowing from left to uh, from right to left and uh, um, the fluid will have the uh, there is a small rising column here and uh, there is another pipe with the L shape uh, because of uh, the movement of the liquid also the uh, the liquid level will move high because of that okay. so the pressure that we measure here is the static pressure the pressure that we measure here is static pressure here it is not only because of uh, the uh, pressure of the liquid but also the bulk movement of the uh, liquid the the pressure column is high the column is high so whatever is the pressure that you experience here is the total pressure okay is the total pressure. so this pressure at the level column one is the total pressure this is static pressure and the difference between these two is dynamic pressure dynamic pressure will increase if the velocity of the fluid increases uh, and decrease motion rate. If you make this fluid stand still, then both the columns will come to the uh, same level. That means there is no dynamic pressure. So dynamic pressure comes into the play because of bulk motion of the fluid. Otherwise, it doesn't come. With this length, it will stop. Next class, the words will uh, stop. Okay. Uh, there is something called absolute zero. Absolute zero means there is no pressure at all. As long as there is molecule, there will be a movement and there will be a pressure, however small it is. Absolute zero pressure means what? There is no molecule at all. Or you can artificially create, you freeze all the molecular movements and uh, you make a state that all, all the molecules are sitting idly. Simply they are sitting. I am not doing anything. So we make it stationary. That is also possible. Zero pressure. That is absolute zero. At that time, what will be the temperature? Zero Kelvin. Zero? Because there is no movement. Only if the molecule movement is there. Because temperature is the measure of average kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is half Kelvin square. M is mass. That is anyway going to be there. For as long as there is a particle, M will be there. If velocity is zero, then kinetic energy will be zero. So average kinetic energy is zero, so temperature will be zero. So zero Kelvin is absolute zero. So zero pressure at zero Kelvin is absolute zero. And many times it's very difficult to achieve. Because of that, we created another reference that's an atmospheric pressure. Here it is. This is an atmospheric pressure. For all practical purposes, we will be using atmospheric pressure as a reference for the pressure pressure. Okay. So we take atmospheric pressure, we call that as uh, our zero pressure. It is not actually zero, it is not absolute zero. But for all our practical purposes, we will say zero pressure for gauging purpose. That is why it is called gauge pressure. For gauging purpose, for measuring purpose, we made that as zero. But actually, it is one bar pressure from absolute zero. But we here after we reset that to zero, so it's called gauge pressure. That's zero. Anything about we measure with respect to that atmospheric pressure is gauge pressure. Anything below we measure with respect to atmospheric pressure, we call it as vacuum pressure. We call it as vacuum pressure. Because we started calling this as vacuum, vacuum pressure, we started calling this as absolute vacuum pressure or absolute zero pressure. Means there is absolutely there is no pressure. Like vacuum means there is nothing. Pressure means there is something. There is a contradiction. <coughs> that is how we will have termed it and we are using it, so we have to continue this. Vacuum means there is nothing. If there is nothing, there is no pressure. If there is nothing, there is no pressure, there is no temperature. But we call it as vacuum pressure. The technical term vacuum pressure is unmentionally used. Here the absolute mean should not be applied and then understood. Vacuum pressure means any pressure above absolute zero, below atmospheric pressure, when we measure, we call it as vacuum pressure. 